Hey guys, in this video we are going to be installing a Pioneer brand 36,000 BTU mini split heat pump. I installed this at my father's house in order to help him out so he didn't have to lug any uh, heavyweight pellets to heat his home and also to give him cooling. Um, my father and I had a great time doing this and this, this video is really just intended to show the do-it-yourselfers that you can install your own um, heat pump with very little um, tools, um, very um, little experience. This is only the second one that I've ever installed um, and it went relatively smooth. So following the step-by-step -step video, um, you should not have any problem. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is the inside unit from Pioneer. We just took it out of the box. Um, what we have to do first is there's a plate on the back. We're going to remove this plate and then we'll be able to get um, into uh, the HVAC lines here. So this is the mounting bracket that's actually going to mount onto the wall. So we're just going to remove this. This is just a shipping screw that um, we need to take off so that way we can get this bracket mounted up onto the wall. Sorry, you can stop it. All right guys, so we took our mounting bracket off the back and we mounted it to the wall. Um, relatively simple. In this case, all we did was center the mounting bracket on the wall. Um, and because we had tongue and groove wood, we didn't really have to worry about the studs themselves. But you, what you would want to do is identify in the wall where your studs are. So that way you can make sure that your screws are securely hooked into the studs. If you have a spot where you cannot hit the studs, then you need to make sure you use really high strength drywall anchors so that way you can hold this thing up. Um, another thing that's key here is somewhere over here is where our hole is going to be. We're gonna measure it out the hole, which is where our HVAC lines are gonna pass through. So you need to make sure that wherever that hole is, before you mount your bracket, you need to make sure that that hole is going to end up uh, where there is no stud. So I had measured that out. You can see these are our HVAC lines and our drain line we're gonna bend these over and so I measured this is where the bracket ends so I measured where my lines are so I know that my lines are gonna come out right where there's no stud so that's really the biggest um, thing mounting this inside unit is extremely simple so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark out where we're gonna drill this hole and we're gonna drill a two and a half inch Hole, so that way we have enough um, wiggle room to be able to put the HVAC lines through the drain line and then also our electrical line that's going to connect from the inside unit to the outside unit. All right guys, so we're going to drill the hole through a two and a half inch hole. We've got it all marked out and we actually set this um, inside unit up here just to be able to double check to make sure that my measurements were right. That drill running. But uh, <laughs> My partner outside says that he doesn't hear the drill running. He's going to hear it running in a second. But this is a serious drill. You can pick this up right at Home Depot or whatever. This is made um, with a long extension so we can go all the way through to the outside. All right, so we've got our indoor unit mounting bracket and our wall uh, hole drilled out. This is a two and a half inch hole. Um, and now we're going to go to the outside and we're going to open up our outdoor unit verify that we've got everything, um, and then start working on our electrical connections out there. All right, guys, so we have our six slash three gauge wire. That's a little bit bigger than what we need for this unit. We probably could have gotten away um, with an eight gauge wire, um, but we wanted to get size it a little bit bigger um, because we may end up adding another unit on, um, so we wanted to have a little bit of extra power. So we're using a 50 amp breaker inside and a 50 amp breaker outside here at our what we're using is a spa disconnect gfci box you don't you don't need the gfci for it um, but um, that's just what we bought um, so we have six gauge wire what we've done here is we just kind of stretched it out here and i'm going to install my box right here i'm going to mount it onto the wall where the unit is going to be and um, and i will make my electrical connections into here and I'll show you guys how to make those electrical connections. If you're not comfortable with doing electrical work, and don't have training in it, find somebody else. Um, you can get seriously hurt. We're talking about 220 volts here. Um, so again, um, if you're not comfortable and had training, then uh, hire an electrician. 
All right, so here's the inside of the electrical um, box. Obviously, uh, this is your breaker, which is going out to the unit. So you've got your red um, load wire, which is power. This is your neutral wire, and this is your other load wire. And then you've got your ground hooked up over onto the right-hand side. This is the power coming in, and this is your neutral, and these are your two powers hooked into those blocks. Um, really not a whole lot to it. So one goes into the electrical panel, which is this one, and this one goes to your unit. So really not a whole lot to it. Just make sure those connections are all snug, and you can close up your box. All right, so we've got our outdoor unit set up on our stand. Um, that's going to keep it off the ground. The stand is, is pretty important because, especially if you're in cold climates, it'll allow um, the water to drain out through. Um, if not, it'll turn into an ice block in the bottom of the unit and the unit will shut down. So if you're using it for heating, you definitely need a stand. Um, they also have the ones that can mount to the wall. This is a ground mount stand. All right, guys, so now we're going to mount um, this outdoor cover, which is going to just make it so it will obviously look nicer and it'll be able to seal up the hole. The reason why we're doing this right now is because you actually need to run the wire and the piping through this um, now or you won't be able to do it later. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm just going to mount this to the wall and pull my wires through um, and then pull my HVAC lines. And then we'll be moving to the inside to set up the indoor unit. All right, so we're in at the inside unit. We gently bent these pipelines out so that way they're straight out because we're going to stick them right through the hole. Be careful with these. Um, they are meant to be bent. They have built-in springs in them, but still just don't jerk on them. I've got my other end of my wire here, which is going to connect my indoor unit to my outdoor unit. I'm going to feed this through here. We open the front and there's a little panel in here that we popped off. That's where your wire connectors are. You can see that there's a one, a two, a three, and a ground. It does not matter which ones you connect to what. All that matters is that the same color wire that you use to connect the one on the inside is used to connect the one on the outside. So, um, you know, if you want to use like red, um, black, white, and then green will be your ground. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, just use green for your ground and it doesn't really matter what you use for one, two, or three. If you think you can't remember just snap a photo of what you use on the indoor unit to make sure you use you do the same thing on the outdoor unit and it's on just focus on holding it for a second there warrior I go through the hole first okay bring the bottom in dad if you can you got to do that with me at the same time what? It's against the wall. It's against the wall. Okay, good. Well, there. Wow. Now we just got to uh, make sure our water line here is pointed down and we're good. All right, so we've got our wire and our drain line and our two um, HVAC lines run out of the wall. So all we've got to do is make the connections right there on the outside. Um, over here to this unit. We've got our lines right here. So that's all we're gonna do. Um, the one thing that I will say is use a spring bender um, before you bend these lines. Do not bend them by hand. If you bend them by hand, you're gonna kink them. And then when you kink them, they're ruined. And then you'll have to buy all new lines. So spend the 10 bucks on Amazon and get a spring bender kit before you start twisting these lines around. All right, guys, so um, we've gotten our lines installed outside, you know, just kind of leaving there hanging for now. Um, and we've got our lines hooked up. Everything's tightened down. I'm gonna start drawing a vacuum. You will need a vacuum pump. I'll drop a link to this. You can get this right on Amazon. You're gonna use your manifold gauges. Um, you probably wanna let this thing run for a couple of hours to make sure that your lines are all dried uh, and have removed all of the, all of the, um, uh, moisture and air from the lines so um, you'll need a 410A adapter for your manifold gauges I've got two of them um, so I'm gonna draw from both the high side and the low side um, on the unit so I'm just gonna hook that up um, we'll start the vacuuming while I'm still uh, installing the rest of the electrical so that way we can kill two birds in one stone snap the vacuum on. 
negative 30. You see how it was just leaking until I tightened up the line? Mm -hmm. wanna, it should drop right down to negative 30 and, and stay there. So we're going to let this thing vacuum for you know, a little bit and ch check all of our lines. I think we'll get a, another leak down here on this one because it... Yeah, this one is the one that fell in the dirt. So... Just want to make sure that connection's good. They don't have to be super tight. They got rubber on them, so that's fine. to pretty good pull here on our left side we've got a little bit less than negative 30 and we'll get a little over negative 30 over here but you know this isn't the best gauge set the key thing here is get it down to 30 or just about um, and then once you vacuum for a little while shut it off you want to see if there's any change or drop in pressure so we'll just shut it off real quick and you'll just watch it for a couple of minutes if these move at all then you know that you've got a leak in your line somewhere. So, but we're gonna just let this vacuum for a couple of hours while we finish our electrical. This one is going down. Yeah, the left side is moving. Again, I don't. I think it might be that fitting though. The right side's not moving at all. So anyways, um, that's the technique in, and we're just going to finish the electrical connections. We'll have to clean up that rubber piece that dropped in the dirt. All right, guys, so we're down here in the basement, um, and we're getting ready to uh, make our connection, which will go out to our main unit. So what we have here, again, is a 50-amp double-pulled breaker. Um, the breaker is just going to snap into this bottom slot here, which we had room in our current electrical panel. So you're going to hook your two live units right into the end of this breaker. And then you're going to connect your ground and your neutral onto your post up here, your ground post. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to turn this electrical panel off, cut the power to the whole panel. I'm flipping this top breaker to, uh, to make sure that you're being safe. And now the whole panel is dead. So um, and then make your connections onto your, onto your breaker and then snap everything back together. And then you can turn your power back on. All right, guys, so we've got everything buttoned up. It's actually the next day. We've had our vacuum running, and we actually left it um, off overnight to see if we had any change in pressure. We did not. So again, we're looking at negative 30. Um, and the key thing is once you turn your vacuum off, you want to make sure that it holds that pressure. I would leave it for a couple of hours. We just left it overnight, so about 24 hours later, and uh, we had no... Um, equalization of the pressure um, if you had a leak it would move up to zero um, but we don't um, so we're looking good there we got all of our electrical connections done here um, this is coming from the, uh, the power box over here of course we've got our uh, common our neutral um, which i actually just grounded out because there's no spot for the neutral on this unit um, and here's your power wire and your power wire for your 220 and then of course your ground Again, you want to make sure that the same wire colors here match the same ones that you used on the inside unit. So I, I went red, black, and white on the inside unit, and then of course the green is the ground. Um, so the key thing is, is whatever you use for number one on the inside unit, make sure you use out here. Um, same thing for two and three. And that's really all there is to it. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to turn our compressor, or excuse me, turn our um, vacuum pump off. And then we're going to go ahead and open our gas side valve um, and we should start seeing um, and hearing some actual gas come through the lines and we'll actually start to see our gauges will rise 
up to zero, uh, and then of course continue to increase in the positive territory as we add um, those. And then we will remove our yellow line um, and off of our pump, and we will just make and just really let it go. So at this point, we're going to close off both of our valves, and then we're going to release some gas. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and let some gas out of the unit, and it'll start filling up the lines. We'll hear it here in a second. All right, guys, so here's the electrical uh, diagram here. Um, we ended up not needing a, um, a neutral for this unit. Um, it's not designed to have that neutral, um, but that's okay. So we just have it disconnected at both ends and we'll cap it off. Uh, just an extra wire, no problem. So this is your live. Um, I ended up moving this one over just to give me a little bit of extra space because I had space in the bus. You don't have to do that, but that's okay. Um, everything else is you just want to make sure your number one wire is connected to your number uh, one wire that you had on the inside unit and matches. So one in this case is red for us and then two is black and three is white. No difference there. Um, uh -huh. So that's all. And then on the other side, um, here in our breaker box, you can see we also have our neutral disconnected as well. Because um, we don't need it in this case. So we just have our two live units and we have our ground wire. Um, so that's all we're going to do. All right, guys, so the only thing I didn't show you at the end of the video was you just need to obviously button everything back up that you had taken apart on the outdoor unit if you had taken a door off or anything like that. Um, you need to close up your electrical panel um, and you need to close up your um, outside electrical box that you had installed. And then you just need to turn the breakers on and then you need to walk inside and turn the unit on. It's really that simple. Um, this was a real pleasure to do. I think we were able to do a 36,000 BTU unit with all the supplies and everything for around $2,400, which is absolutely astounding. Um, that would have cost many thousands of dollars to have a local HVAC um, installer um, do this. A couple of things worth noting, um, if you wanted to, prior to doing a vacuum, you could have um, gotten a bottle of nitrogen pressurize the system to about 400 PSI. Um, generally, that's recommended. That would allow you to look for any kind of leaks that you have in the system. Um, so that's certainly something that you can do, especially if you have a multi-zone system um, and you, were, you, know, you have more fittings, um, it may be something worth doing. Um, so really, these things are not difficult. Um, they're a lot of fun to actually install. Um, and they can save you a lot of money on your electric costs. So I think it's definitely within the realm of a do-it-yourself or just take your time, have lots of fun, um, and, uh, and enjoy yourself. Um, if you like this video, guys, please do subscribe. Please like the video. That certainly helps me out. I am an Amazon affiliate, so by clicking the Amazon affiliate links in the comments section to make your purchases, it does help me. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm very clear in disclosing that. Um, I do get paid um, a small amount of money um, if you do purchase through Amazon through one of the links. So if you liked the video and appreciated it, please do utilize the Amazon links to give me a little bit of love. Thanks a lot guys. Have fun with your project. Be safe and have a good day.